Well, hello. This is Chris, and we are ready to start episode three in our first season. And so let's get started with Makeup Gourmet Live. Oh, thank you, thank you. Please, everybody, sit down. Let's get started. All right, so uh, last week, if you were tuning in, we had some buffering issues because, well, it's the world. Um, so hopefully the stream is going to be good today. Uh, currently, our stream is good. So as you see before you, there's a variety of um, images of people wearing glasses just to take a look at, you know, different ideas of how glasses, types of glasses translate from person to person. So I'm going to demonstrate today uh, the do's and don'ts, especially for eye makeup when it comes to wearing uh, glasses. So I want to talk just a little bit about um, what I like when I see, um, when I see uh, you know, nice glasses. So in this image here, um, I'm, I really like this makeup because even though the glasses are big and they sort of captivate the face, we still see her eyes so clearly. Um, and the main reason, re reason why is because her makeup is minimal. However, it's very articulate makeup. So the features, meaning her eyebrows and her eyeliner, um, are very clean. They're well done. And so uh, the, her eyes themselves are well-defined, well-shaped, and pronounced. They're not clouded with a lot of makeup that is going to keep us from pretty much seeing you as well as we would like to. Um, also, what's nice about this image is that she has um, a pretty bright lipstick on. And, and that also helps balance out the weight of the glasses, not just in terms of the darkness of the frames, but the size. Um, maybe if she was wearing softer frames, that lipstick might seem a bit much on her. But because of those glasses, you can see how well that just sort of uh, really flatters and compensates. So I really like that picture. So I wanted to share that with you. Um, I also want to share um, with you just a, just another idea of what I think is good makeup. Um, again, for a darker skin tone, because you have to always take into consideration intensities in your makeup when you're putting your makeup on. And if your skin tone is darker, um, often you need to brighten. You can notice the brightness that's happening up under her eyes a little bit, the brightness uh, in her cheek area. It sort of illuminates um, up, up to the eyes. And when your skin becomes like past medium intensity, often what well, the mistake made is you try to go darker on darker and it just just gets muddy you actually want to brighten to create contrast um, and so for that reason alone I like this makeup you can also see that again her um, eye makeup is very clean uh, her brows are nice and clean the lip color I mean you can kind of see what's nice about her lip color it could be stronger but you can see what she's wearing today you see that beige top it balances. The intensity of her lipstick balances with her top. Um, and so she looks really smart and put together. And the glasses don't win. She doesn't win. We sort of see both at the same time. And that's really what you want to do anytime you wear your makeup. So I want to share with you this one image. Now, for me, I'm not crazy. Again, these are big frames I'm talking about. I'm not crazy about this makeup. And I'll tell you why. I feel like... Um, the model wants both her eyes and her glasses to win. She's got, you know, really thick eyeliner on. Um, the brows are fine, a little bit bushy. They could be a little bit crisper, uh, maybe a little bit lighter in color because you notice that her hair color, where the light is sort of reflecting off um, the top of her, the wave of her hair over on the right side of her um, face, it's a nice soft kind of honey blonde color, and her brows look a little bit more brown and ashy, so there's kind of a disconnect between the hair color but for me there, there's just so much color going on on her eyes and I and I and I think the idea is that we want to make our eyes stand out 
behind these big glasses. So what do we do? We wear lots, you know. And and I do also think that this, of course, was the um, the intent of the makeup artist and of the model here in that you see that her lipstick is super pale. Like there's almost nothing on her lips except very sheer matte definition. The lips are almost meant to disappear a little bit. And in doing so, all the focus goes to the eyes. Um, but just for me, what happens is uh, people will often overcompensate for their glasses by trying to wear too much eye makeup for us to see them. And uh, today, when we demonstrate um, what we're going to be doing, uh, I think you're going to see that uh, what, we're, what we're doing is going to be um, different than that. We we're really looking for the balance. We're going to look, excuse me, we're going to look at different styles of lenses that go with, uh, with your face and what you're choosing to wear and all that good stuff. So without further ado, we're going to get started. Now, wait, before I, I switch the frame, this is a disclaimer. Um, my model here today, I'll just, I'll just no further ado. Hey, everybody, how's it going? So today I have with me Terry Price. Hi, Terry. Hi, Chris. Hi. Uh, Terry, uh, beloved, she was curious about makeup for glasses. I had done a blog on this, I don't know, maybe a year ago um, because I think – People, you know, are you know wear glasses. Do, what do I do? Do I wear more or less? What's the deal? Um, so um, you'll see with Terry today. She has her glasses on, but Terry, go ahead and slip your glasses off for us, and and turn your head a little bit to the left, and kind of lean in there just a little bit. So uh, and then turn your head to the left a little bit more, uh, so you can see, and then come, um, um, and then kind of turn to the right, so you can see we've done her makeup already uh, on the one side, and I hope that most of you are going, uh, Chris. Now, makeup's not very good, because it isn't. Um, what I tried to do was demonstrate mistakes that all of us make when we do our makeup and how to easily correct them. Um, what's going on with this makeup is that she is compensating, right? She she arched her brow really high. I'm saying she did, because this is how, what she did. <laughs> I actually did this. Um, but she arched her brow really high and rounded, because she really wanted to show up behind the glasses. But in doing so, you can see how the brow just kind of looks weird, because it's just kind of flying up into space. And then close your eye for us, lean in a little bit more. Then what she also tried to do was she really tried to add a lot of color to the lid of her eye, which really sort of made her eye sink and disappear away um, here on the ball of her eye. Um, let me go over here. Here on the ball of her eye. You, you were fine. It was me. Oh, I was okay. messing up. Um, here you can see there's a lot of color. And then she did this contouring thing out here, what I call the wing, where the color, the darker color, the contour color isn't really fitting the natural arc of her bone, but really trying to make her eye look bigger but not in a natural way. So in all those ways, there's sort of a disconnect. Um, an open for us, but stay there. And you'll also notice that her eyeliner is high rounded in the middle. She she chose to do a thicker liner in, so that we would see her eye better. But what it does is it adds weight. It adds weight to the eye when you thicken the eye line, especially through the middle. And then um, you can see on the bottom eye line that she, um, that she really, keep your eye open for us, that the, the, and look right here, that the eye line is actually missing her eye. It's below her lash bed, right? So she's trying to make her eye look bigger, but what we see is her eye and then the makeup attached to the eye. So come on back and just pick any pair of glasses you want. Um, pick the frameless, actually. Yeah, the one you want is the frameless one. Now, I like these glasses because we really see her eye very well um, when, when she wears these glasses, um, it, right? Because there's no interference um, down below uh, down below her eye with the glasses themselves. Um, but still, for me, for my money, what happens is is that she um, look at that look at that right here right here. Uh, but but you can see that there's still a disconnect between the eyes. And, um, and the makeup itself. And when you're wearing frameless glasses or partially frameless, it's really important that you articulate your makeup well because we are going to see your eye better. So let's try a thicker frame glass that you have. You'll find that the, the more frame you have, uh, the more forgiving your, um, your, your makeup is because the frames sort of, you know, start to start to take a little bit of focus away from the eye. And so that's always a good thing. So that's a little bit of my um, my dialogue about uh, glasses in general. So um, 
So well, now let's get started with uh, what I think are some really good choices. So there's going to be a lot of technique in, um, in some of my favorite techniques, actually, for eyes in this episode today. So I suggest, yeah, pay, you know, paying good attention because um, you're going to get some really good uh, feedback. In, but we're well, not just feedback, but you're going to get um, – hold on for a second. We're still here. <laughs> Here we are. Uh, I want to share with you one little thing. Um, let me find it. One second. The fun of running your... Uh, one second. There it is. There it is. Oh, I'm just missing my... Okay, well, I'm missing my, um, my live chat uh, slide, but basically the live chat slide says, Hey! Get on and ask some questions. I don't care what the questions are. They, they can have, have nothing to do with glasses, for, for all I care. Um, really, what's important is that um, your voice be heard and we're, we share with you any, any tidbits of info that might illuminate and make your makeup better. Now, I say that because um, today's featured product is going to be the waterproof gel eyeliner. So I kind of messed up in the sense that I really wanted it to be my eyeshadow base, but... I advertised the waterproof gel eyeliner, so there it is. So I'll feature the uh, eyeshadow base in another um, another segment because you're going to want that too. So everything that we're showing you today um, in terms of makeup and, and all that stuff, it's all available at MakeupGourmet.com. So or you can just you can just go there and, uh, and shop, shop to your heart's content and uh, we'll be happy to... Um, Send you send your product promptly. All right, so let's get started. So slip off your glasses for me. So Terry was very nice. She let me kind of do her makeup a little bit wrong, um, and now we're going to do it kind of right. Um, and I'm going to stand while I do this because I'm sitting and doing makeup is weird for me. So here we get started. So first thing is brows. So turn this way just a little bit and and kind of just get comfortable here. That's really good. You comfortable? Mm -hmm. All right, good. So. Um, what you'll notice is that on this brow, do you see how the rounding starts almost immediately? Um, here's her brow, and then it starts going rounding up and around immediately. When you start to round your brow, all it tells us, the viewer, is that your eye is on its way down. So instead, let's keep the eye going up and outward. So we're going to work with a powerful straight line. I'll show you how that works. So I'm going to pick a color that's very close to Terry's hair color, and I'm going to be using just a really fine-edged brush, all right, really fine edge, and it's got the color right on the tip, and I'm going to create two straight lines. So this is tricky, but check this out. I take my brush, I start from the inner corner of the nose past the inner corner of the eye, right here. That's where I'm going to start, and I'm going to draw a straight line. Now that straight line you can see is going right along the bottom row of her eyebrow hairs. Right? And right about here her brow starts to curve. So you think, well, I better start to curve. But we're not going to. What we're going to do instead is keep that line going straight. And this is where the energy of the eyebrow happens. Because if you keep going straight until you poke through the top of the brow, you create this really high moment. Then where it starts to poke through the top, then you're going to draw a second straight line. Now, the illusion, of course, as you're looking at this, is that it looks really curved, like it rises up and it peaks, but it's not. It's actually two straight lines. The reason it looks curved is because she is curved. She's three-dimensional. Her bone is curving. So what you want to do is make sure if you're trying to create height, work with a straight line. The line's going to look curvy and soft no matter what because we are curvy and soft. That's how our faces are. We're not two-dimensional. So now I'm taking the flat edge of my brush, and I'm coming back, and I'm not trying to fill in the brow. I'm trying to soften that straight line. So where I drew the line, this is the darkest part of the eyebrow. So there's a lot of power here, energy. It's pulling the brow down this way. And then on the outside of the brow here, the weight's on the top. So the weight's lifting up. So open for us and, keep, and open your eyes. So you can see the uh, sort of the lift we've given her eyebrow. Turn a little bit... Um, towards the other eye, go back the other way. So you can see how you see how the roundedness of that brow is. Then come back to the to come on back. You can see how that brow has a nice strong energy lift. 
I use very little product. And that's the other mistake that most of us make is every time we go to blend, we go back and we get a little bit more on our brush. We go, okay, a little bit more makeup. No, blend. And you're just putting way too much stuff on the eye. So from here, I'm going to uh, assess and I'm going to add just a little bit more color because I want it to be a little bit darker. But again, I want you to see that it's one, two, straight line. And then I'm going to blend. And when I say blend, I'm really fluffing. I'm pressing against the, the line and I'm fluffing upward, just like this. And then the more I fluff, the softer that, that um, sort of strong line appears. So I can make this brow look really feathery and soft, or I can make it look, make it look more kind of lasery. Open for us. Open your eyes. Do um, you see how that brow looks, looks much softer now? Just because I fluffed it a little bit more. But you can see that strong, powerful line. So go ahead and grab your same pair of glasses and put those on. And you'll see how the energy of this really, um, uh, and then drop your chin just a little bit and turn from left to right. So you can see how that brow just doesn't really serve any purpose and how this brow really frames the eye nicely um, with, with the look of, of the frames of her eyes. All right, so go ahead and take your glasses off. So that, that technique is all, of course, in my book, uh, my eyebrow technique. Um, it, it does save your life. Oh, how far out do I go? from the, uh, what I call the nose flare, out past the outer corner of the eye. You want to go out that far. So actually, I stopped a little bit short. Good thing I measured. So one other thing I want to point out is when I fluff, I only fluff to the peak. This little line here, I just kind of draw over it a few times to make it soft. Don't fluff this. You want the illusion to be that the eyebrow is tapering. It's going from thickest to thinnest, right, in a nice taper, taper motion. All right, now here's the product that isn't the featured product of the day, but we do suggest that you um, that you watch this. Um, well, wait, one second, I want to check something here. If you were at home and you're and you're watching this, if you can give us a quick note, uh, just tap into the live chat and say, got you loud and clear. Um, Cause I'm looking at my feed. Oh no, my feed is good. My feed is good. <laughs> All right, just got a little bit concerned cause I have this weird uh, double screen thing happening. I'm fine now. All right, going on back to where we were. My favorite product ever is eyeshadow base. Eyeshadow base is, you use it every time you do your makeup, whether you're doing eyeshadow or not. So it seems almost a tad, like it's the wrong name uh, to call it eyeshadow base if you're not using eyeshadow, but use this. So what I did with um, Terry's eye makeup is on this side, I didn't use any eyeshadow base. And we all have natural discoloration on our lid. And what that does is it pulls whatever pigment we put on our eye, whatever eyeshadow we use, it pulls it down to this whatever that discoloration is. And so it just doesn't really pop. Eyeshadow base, on the other hand, is going to brighten the eye area. So what does an eyeshadow base do? Most of you know this, but it's designed to... Uh, smooth out the eye area like a primer. It's also designed to keep your eyeshadow on longer and keep it from creasing and fading. But you should notice that my eyeshadow base is not a human color. It's not, the co it's not clear and it's not like the color of a concealer. It's a corrector. It's a pale pink and what pink does is it brightens. So I'm going to put this product on the side. This is a synthetic brush and you notice I'm just patting very gently. I'm not swooping. Um, and then turn your head away from me a little bit and close and lean in just a touch. So I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to just sweep back and forth um, on Terry's eyelid. And I'm basically getting the product off of my brush and I'm getting it onto her eye. So where does all this stuff go? You want it to start here along that, that border then go all the way out to here. So you want it to fall right along that border. So once you think you have enough on, then you're going to use the tip of the brush. Terry, how hard am I pushing? Not at all. Not at all. So what I'm doing is I'm mixing the, the, the product with the tissue of the skin. 
I'm not covering it. I'm not sweeping in one direction. I'm mixing it in because every layer of makeup that you do, you want it to be skin thin. Open for us. So you can see how much brighter her eye looks now. It just pops all on its own. And when you wear glasses, so put on another, put on a pair of glasses for us, doesn't matter which, um, it, it will pop because her eye looks more clear, right? So you can see how easily we see her um, her eye and her eyelid just because of because what we've done, look down for us, so we can really see the brightness and good and open again. Yeah, so I, I'm sure you could, you know, see the difference. And I use very little product. Um, so because any product that has any um, oil in it, you always want to set with a little bit of powder. So I'm going to take just a little bit of a translucent powder. I'm putting my translucent powder on the side of a deposit brush, on the side of it, not on the tip. Close for me. I'm going to hold the brush like a microphone. I'm going to gently, yet firmly, press that powder into the eyeshadow base. I'm just drying it. I don't want it to go anywhere. Powder is your friend. Get a good, uh, really refined powder. Oh, let me think. Makeup Gourmet Powder. <laughs> because it makes your makeup, it doubles the life of your makeup. And if something's creamy, it, it's going to crease because our body is warm. And so the product is going to start to move. And you know how product settles on our skin. So you want to powder it so before it starts to do that, okay? So now I'm going to show you uh, some cool eyeliner technique. Um, and so the first thing we're going to do, I'm, going to use the, I'm using the same colors I used on the other side of Terry's face. So I'm not like bad color, good color, <laughs> bad cop, good cop. No, this is um, black brown gel eyeliner. Whoever wins the gel eyeliner, you can get the eyeliner of your choice. Um, so what I'm doing, this is my gel eyeliner here. It's black brown. It's like a thick ink is what it's like. And I'm going to uh, put just a little bit on the tip of my brush, wipe off the excess. Now, when, I, when you see me do this, it looks freaky, but it's really easy to do on yourself. So I want you to look down towards the floor. You want to take, uh, keep your eye open, but just look down. You want to lift the eye up very gently like this. Don't try to lift from here. Nothing happens. you got to lift from here. And then bring the brush up underneath the lashes, and you want to press and wiggle. You want to get that brush in between the lashes. So what I'm doing is I'm actually separating the lashes to get that brush head in there. Now, this product is so ridiculously waterproof, it's going to dry in about five seconds, and then it's not coming off. It's going to look awesome all day. So a couple of rules. Turn towards me a little bit. The longer the line, the bigger the eye. So are you okay in there? Tell me if yeah, you need a break. Because, you know, some people I do this on, and they just want to hit me. And I don't blame them because I'm poking them in the eye with a stick. But you just work slowly. Notice I'm taking this all the way to the inner corner. Okay, open for us now. Open. Take a look. So you can see how well defined the eyes. But look at the two different eye lines on her eye. You see this one, the eye is kind of thick and rounded, and it ages her. Whereas the one on this side really just defines the shape of her eye. So go ahead and put on a pair of glasses. We'll just compare those two. Just for fun. Good. And yeah, lean it towards the camera with your with the side we just did. Um, with the side we just did, that's good. So you see how much cleaner that is? And come back to the other side. Yeah, real, uh, come, turn back just a little bit so we don't get the light reflection from the lights. Yeah, right there. Come back a little bit. Right there. Good, good, good. All right, great. So... That's, what, that's called lash filler. That's not all we're going to do with eyeliner. Uh, slip your glasses off. But for now, that's all we're going to do. Uh, because I'm also going to do the wedge eyeliner. Because he's so sexy. <laughs> so you might think I'm a person who doesn't like the wet eyeliner. I don't like that look of dark liner inside my eye. Well, if you wear glasses, I'm telling you, it's the best place the for you. It's the only way to go. Okay, it's the only <laughs> way to go. Uh, Terry said it, not me. All right, so Terry, look up towards the ceiling. So when you do this, you do it twice. And you notice I don't pull down. I push in, and the lashes just, just come forward. Now with the tip of my brush, I'm going to just gently put that color on the pink part. Don't even aim for the lashes at all. You're going above the lashes along the pink part. Once you get it on, squeeze your eyes tight, really tight and open, and then do it again. Look up. So why you're squeezing is whatever part of your eye that was wet, that this stuff wasn't going to stick, it comes off, but it dries it. And then when you do the second layer... Squeeze again. Now it's on for good. And then take a look into the lens. So you can see how that line is much softer, crisper, how the eye 
Again, it's more, I think, youthful looking, and really the elegance of her eye we see, that's sort of the drama of this kind of overdone makeup, and the, where the eye line is um, actually, you see on this side, um, the eye line is actually missing um, her eye. It's below her eye, trying to make her eye look bigger. So you got that little ring of flesh, and then the white of her eye. Whereas on the other side, whereas on the other side, it's a really, you don't even see the line. You just see the shape of the eye. Now, you can wear black if you want. This is black brown. You can go pretty gosh darn dark with all this because when you got your glasses on, let's try another pair of glasses. Let's try those. Um, you'll see that uh, that the effect still works. You see, you see how much clearer, clearer, and and sort. Of, again, I'm just going to say young because the eye looks fresh and clean. Whereas on this side, the eye, you know, it's kind of like heavy eye makeup behind those it gets glasses. In my wrinkles. What's that? It gets in my little fine lines. Her little <laughs> fine lines, right? But does it have a good stream? That's yes. Question. Let's hope. Yeah, that's good. In fact, I'm going to check my stream right now while we're working. Um. We're so happy. Our stream is good. good. <laughs> so far, so good. Everybody who was here last week who suffered through this, thanks for coming back. Um, okay, so moving on. Uh, we did the eyeline top and bottom. So uh, before I do the fancy, fancy, um, sexy, sexy wedge eyeliner, I'm going to show you just simple eyeshadow. So since we, we worked really hard on brightening her eye, you can see how bright that eye looks. Look down for us. Look with your eye, good, and then open again. You see how the eye just looks nice and clean and well-defined? We're going to use, uh, because she's wearing blue, we're going to use like a pale pink um, eyeshadow that just illuminates your eye. I call this a satin finish. It's not matte, it's not dead looking, but it's not sparkly either. It just reflects light the same way our skin naturally reflects light, which is evenly, a nice smooth bounce. So again, I put the product on the side of my brush, not the tip, right? And I'm holding the brush like what? Like a microphone. Hold the brush like a microphone. Now when you're cool, give it a little flick, okay? I'm going to get that in there so you can see that. Give it a little <laughs> flick. If you can't do that, just whack it on the edge of your counter. Hold it like a microphone, close for me. Now I'm going to press this color, but only on the ball of her eye. The ball is every place I touch and there's the eyeball underneath. It's Because the bone is here, it's really a half circle shape. And open. And once you get one layer on, go, huh, I want more. So I put more product on my brush, and I'm adding a little bit more. The trick with makeup is not to put it on and then to wipe it down to how you want it to look. You want to layer it up. And by depositing, pressing, open for me, you can really create that um, built-up, layered-up technique. But every layer is skin thin so that it looks very, very natural. So we're going to do a, a very natural contour. This is a color that everybody should own. It's called Acorn. It is the color of shadow. What I mean by that is the shadow created by my hand that's falling on Terry's face right now, it's that color. And I'm just going to press into the outer corner of the eye and do a quarter circle. Not an egg shape, but an actual quarter shape. Quarter circle. Starting here, I'm going to stop right at the center of her eye where her pupil is. And I'm just heightening how light is going to create a shadow on her eye. Let me get my hand out of the way. So I press right here in the corner, right there, quarter circle. Try to use just the, um, the tip of the brush, okay? Don't, don't be lazy and be go and go like this. <laughs> That's my messy machine. <laughs> So press, quarter circle, press, quarter circle, press, quarter circle. And only this. Don't go boom, boom yet. Okay, because you want it darkest here. You want it to soften as it goes in. Once you think you have enough, then um, open your eyes slightly but look down. Sometimes it helps if your eyes are just slightly open to really find that pocket. Now I'm going to go about three quarters of the way in. Let me get my hand out of the way so you can see this. Um, but you should see that I'm using the, the point of my brush. And I'm going nice and rounded. When you get to the outer corner, don't go out like this make my eyes look bigger because it'll just make them pull down. Take the brush in along the top lashes right here. And then open for us. And then go ahead and grab a pair of glasses. 
Really nice. So she's got that really soft contoured crease that opens up her eye really gently and turn the other way. Um, and, and so instead of sort of this dark cloudy mess, I mean, I'm not, the makeup isn't bad that's on her eye, you know, for nighttime maybe or a dramatic look, but it just doesn't work with her glasses. You can see how her, really the shape of her eye just comes to life with this one. So we're going to do one last color, and that's just the highlight color. So go ahead and take your glasses off for me. We're just going to use the same brush, and I'm using, um, what is this color? It's called, uh, oh wait, I don't want to use this color. I'm going to use Oyster, because <laughs> Oyster has a satin finish. And again, I'm going to deposit, so I'm going to press this color right up under her brow bone. You notice I'm pressing the side of the brush. Because with the light color, if you go like this, it goes and it rains down on the eye and it ashes out your darker color. Once you press the color into place, then you want to blur where that second color finishes and that third color begins. It doesn't take much to blur it. And open for us. Good. And really soft and pretty eye. Go ahead and put your glasses on for us. Heck yeah, look how much cleaner and brighter, especially with the, and lean, so let's just lean back a little bit, come on back. What I love is um, the blue, the blue is alive that she's wearing, right? And so, and so blue is kind of bright, it's water, and so her eye is also open and bright. Um, here it's just kind of, um, on the dark side, it's, 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 a, it's a different person. It really doesn't go with the blue that she's wearing, it's a darker look, it's kind of more like a, say she's wearing a deep burgundy or you know, black or what have you. But with this, with this open eye, it really reflects sort of the nature of, uh, of the hue uh, and the intensity of her top, which is a really happy, calming color because blue is very calming because, you know, it's a water color and water is calming. So now I'm going to show you now how to make her eye look even more awesome <laughs> because, we well, enough is enough, but we haven't done enough yet. Do you agree, Miss Terry Price? I agree. More, she says. So we're going to do the wedge eyeliner now. The wedge eyeliner is, you see it all the time and you go, that's what I want? How do I do that? This is how you do it. I, sh I show this a lot. I'm going to be showing this a lot because it's hard to get. So when we did Terry's eyebrows, I worked with a straight line to create the illusion of a curve. Okay, Her eyelid here is even more curvy than her brow bone. So I really have to work with a straight line. If I do any kind of curvy line on her eyelid, it's curving all over the place because her eyelid is curving, the line is curving, and it's just doing weird stuff. I want to create energy. I want to open up her eye. So here's how I'm going to do it. So close your eye for me and lean in towards the camera and then turn your head a little bit away from me. That's it. Lift your chin up just a touch. All right, that's perfect. So. This is the, keep the eye closed, this is the pupil right here, the center of her eye. So whatever we do, we don't want the line that we're drawing to go past the center of the eye. So what I'm drawing is like, um, like a really slender triangle. Oh, I talk so much that my product dries. That's how fast <laughs> this waterproof eyeliner dries. I'm not kidding. It does dry fast. It dries fast, you can jump in uh, Terry's pool and it won't come off. So you look great coming up. Oh, my God, you look so good on camera. All right, here we go. So notice that I start from the outer corner and I draw in. That's easier for me. Why is because I get a nice, clean, crisp corner. If I draw out to that corner, I sometimes I feel like I don't get the, the point that I want. So it's, it's on an angle, but this is a straight line that I just drew. And then you can see it's a little bit higher here. Turn a little bit more. You see there's a little bit of a gap right here. So where that line stops, I'm going to draw it down and fill in in the outer corner of her eye. So you should notice that from the nose flare out past the corner of the eye, that this the angle of this wedge liner falls right on that, that line, that heart line for the eye. So if you, if you don't go out that far, open for us, if you don't go out that far, you don't maximize your eye's energy. And, and so there's more you can do. Now, if you go past it, then you have a cat eye. And there's nothing wrong with a cat eye, um, but, notice, but know that people will always notice the cat eye first. And that's why people do a cat eye, because it's super cool. But if you want to look way awesome, sophisticated together um, all the time, 
go finish right on this border. It just fits your it fits your face and, and your face alone. So I'm gonna just intensify this just a little bit. It looks really good. Do you like it? Terry? I have to look and see. I have to oh, look you can't at see in here? No. Oh, you need <laughs> no, your glasses? I just okay. okay, no, no. I'm All right, good. well, she might like it. Who knows? <laughs> I do So like close it. your eyes for me. So I'm going to um, enhance this just a little bit. Now, again, I'm using black brown, which wouldn't be my first choice for a blue top. Would you uh, use the navy? I would probably use navy. But I'm using black brown because black brown is a good staple to have because it's, you know, it's, you, can't, you, you can never be wrong to use black brown. This looks so good. Now, when I bring that line to the center, it disappears into her lashes. I don't stop above her lashes. So this wedge liner sort of grows out from the lashes. This way, can you open for us? Good. Now, go ahead and put your glasses on again. Let's do the um, frameless or semi-frameless. have lots of choices here for and, glasses. Yeah, this looks really good. <laughs> right? Yeah, just like that. Look at that. Do you see how nicely her eye pops? It's clean, it's bright, and turn that turn the other way, just so we can see that eye. You can see it there. What I see is makeup, right? Um, kind of, and, and I see the makeup and and the glasses, but I, I'm kind of looking at two things. I'll come back the other way, but on this side and look into the lens and to the camera. Good. Turn just back a little. It's like that. Good. Drop your chin, and drop your chin, but look into the look here. Yeah. Good. 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 And then you see how the eye is nice and open and big. Um, and just turn your head just a little bit away from the camera uh, that way. Yeah, that's right. No, yeah, so yeah. Keep turning. Yeah, good. And you see that we um, capture the um, the contour real nice. It looks really good. So for my money, I like everything except one thing, which is I want her um, bottom eye line to be a little bit darker. Mm -hmm. So generally, I say if you want something to be darker, use a darker color. Don't put on more of the same color because then it just gets muddy. But when we put this on her, when I put this on her um, earlier, I thought I could probably get more on there. So that's what I'm going to do. So look up for me. So I'm going to take my brush. I'm going to add just a little bit more out here. Yeah. So simple to do. Now it's really sticking. Squeeze tight and open. Good. Now that eye is highly defined. It looks really pretty. Why don't you slip on another pair of glasses for us? And so you see that... Um, Makeup for glasses, it's really more a focus on brow and um, brightening the eye. How do you open up your eye? Uh, it's often not what we add, but what we take away. And when, in this instance, we take away some of the natural discoloration uh, from the eyelid by using the eyeshadow base, right? It's a pale pink color, so it brightens the eye. Now, if you cover the eye with this, you don't look good because you don't look human. But if you mix this color with the color of your skin, you get that magical brightening effect. That's what correctors are called. So when you go to makeupgourmet.com uh, and you look up uh, look up these products, the, my eyeshadow base is under eyeshadow base, but also under correctors, because correctors are blending odd colors with your skin to create a third neutral color. Um, that looks really, really pretty. So what did I want to do? I don't know. I think that's enough. So what I like about this look is, um, keep your glasses on for okay. me. What I like about this look is um, the glasses read well. Uh, we already did sort of a, a deeper, richer um, lipstick color. If you notice, Terry has um, kind of hazily eyes, but the intensity of the lip color, meaning the lightness to darkness of the lip color, is equal to sort of the intensity of her eye color, the iris. So it's not hazel, but it is the same sort of lightness to darkness color. So when we look at her, the intensity of her lip and the intensity of her of her iris come at us at the same time. Um, and so she looks very balanced. We in the rest of her makeup, we, we did already. We did her foundation, her cheek color. Um, she actually wanted to know about um, cream blush. She saw my show last week and suggested I do makeup for glasses. And so she she did this side. For the blush. Was it this side you did? Yes, it is. Yeah, the side that looks better because <laughs> I did too much on her side. <laughs> um, but it looks really, really nice. Um, and how's the foundation feel? It feels really good. Yeah. Really good. Yeah. My foundation has a good way of sort of becoming skin. I know. It's a good product. How about mascara? Too much or too little when you well, wear glasses? Well, well, Chris, who are you anyway? <laughs> Am I my resume? Let's find out. So... 
uh, with a very gentle, you forgot something nudge from Terry, I'm going to demonstrate mascara. With the... Uh, I'm going to use black. I have in, for With Makeup Gourmet, I have black and I have navy mascara. But today we're going to use um, black, you know, blue and black looks good. I love your earrings. Hi, Chris. Yeah. Just noticed those. <laughs> um, so anytime you're working with a makeup artist, of course, always make sure they pull out the mascara tube and they use a, uh, what do you call this, a disposable wand. Put that in there. But here's what you want to do when you do mascara. You want to wipe off as much of this as you possibly can. Okay, you think, well, I want lots of my lashes. Trust me, it'll get there. Don't glob it on. So I wipe most of it off because I'm cool. Then I'm going to say put this top back on. Oh, that's not at all. I'm going to grab a tissue, and I'm going to take even more of the excess off, just like that, okay? And you just want to do this so that you're, you're trying to make the lashes look clean and pretty and long. Um, and we do mascara last because if you do your mascara like in the middle of your makeup then often like say your powder blush or your face powder floats up and it sticks to your lashes and it ashes them out and and healthy hair has a shine to it it has a bounce same thing with our um, eyebrows so you want to don't let them get um, powdery so look down for me so my favorite technique turn away from me a little bit and lean in just a touch is I am using the tip of the wand you see this I'm not brushing the side with the tip of the wand, I'm grabbing Terry's outer lashes. Now, right now, I'm talking to about maybe eight of her lashes, and I'm asking them to go sideways. So I'm pulling them um, outside that line here so that they, what they'll do is they'll open up her eye just to touch more. And once those lashes start to go sideways, I stop because now as that's drying, it's going to hold it there like a gel. Then in the center, I'm going to wiggle at the base of the lash, I'm going to pull up, and then with the tip of my lash, on the inner lashes, I'm going to brush those lashes inward. So what we're doing is think, these are your lashes, and we're trying to spread them wide, right? Do that. If you want to curl them, use a the curler if you want them to go up. But don't use lots of mascara. But if you just brush your lashes up, then this is what we get. But if you spread them wide, you get a bigger fan. So that's what I'm doing right here. So I'm spreading wide. Now, I've done the whole eye. Now I come back and I do a little bit more on the outer lashes because I want these lashes to be the thickest. I want those lashes to be the ones that catch my attention first because that's on the outer corner of the eye, so it's going to open up the eye more. Also, um, I was going to say about uh, mascara in the outer corner is that you want... Stay, stay good, stream. Um, you, you also want these lashes, uh, you know, like I, I guess I said thicker but, and darker as well. Um, and by brushing them twice, you'll get that push. You'll get a stronger uh, gel set. So go ahead and put your glasses on for me. Can I put a different pair? Ah, whatever you want. <laughs> glasses or glasses? This is makeup for glasses. Yeah, Terry brought one, two, five different pairs of glasses. Six, just lots of glasses. They're an accessory. Yeah. Oh, you look great. That, I'm, I'm, I'm very impressed. Um, are you probably can you see in there with your glasses on the, the this little image? Yes. Yeah, That's you good. see how the eyes pop That's really, really nice? Good. Yeah, it opens up really clean. Slip your glasses off for us and just look straight into the to the lens here, just so we can kind of compare. Yeah. Look how much how much more youthful. Wait, hello Chris. How much yeah. more youthful <laughs> this side is. In my opinion, it's fresh and clean. It is a Whereas the other side is just kind heavy. of like it's heavy. I mean, it's strong and heavy, but it's it also just it kind of it almost feels dated in a way. You know, it doesn't have that, that modern feel and that makes us, you know, bright skin, translucent skin, that, that's the young look. That's what you want. Um, anything you, uh, else you want to add? I was thinking. Is oh, I know. How about when people want to put eye color on the bottom underneath, you know, underneath Eyeliner? the eye. Liner or color. Uh -huh. to, sometimes I do that with my glasses when yeah. I'm wearing something that I want to highlight that sure. outfit. So I'm all for it. I mean, uh, but you asking my opinion on well, maybe powder is powder better versus uh, probably not cream. Probably not. You that area is so thin. Um, where there's a lot of oil that concentrates around here. Um, so anything powdery is just going to get oil is going to absorb into it and mess it up. Okay. Um, it, there are some really high pigment products that you can use that are powdery loose pigments that might, you know, do that purpose. 
Um, now that I see how this looks with the dark liner, uh -huh. I'm inclined to stop because I sometimes run a little dab of color under there. I'm inclined not to do it because it looks heavy. Yeah, it doesn't look heavy. <laughs> well, it doesn't have to. I mean, I can demonstrate a little bit because my whole thing is um, when anytime someone wears a color on their face that isn't a human color, I think it's fun because they, uh, they're having fun with color and they're showing it off. Now, in clothing... Uh, it makes, you know, we have fun with clothing, but I, my relationship with skin and and makeup is I want it to look like skin. I want to make it look like your your skin is actually almost creating this effect. Um, it's not wearing that effect, um, except when you don't. When you want to be more, you know, you want to have fun and a lot of color. Um, and know that when you choose to do that, that that's the first thing people are going to look at. Okay. They have no choice. So if you want the first thing for people to look at is underneath your eyes, then put some color underneath there. But by, by me just saying that, you see what I'm saying? Exactly. So, that, so maybe that's not your intention. Your intention is fun. I would suggest if you want to wear color, don't wear it on the bottom. Wear it on the top. Okay. Because that's going to be kind of cool looking. Let me see if I have a decent uh, – what kind of color would you use? I would use blue. All right, look at me. Blue. I'm tapping in blue. <laughs> so I'm going to just try a little bit of blue here. Um, so lean in. And so what I'm going to do is just right along the top of that eye line that we just did. You notice I'm doing a little bit of a poking to get this on because it's powder. I don't want it to rain down onto her face. So I'm adding just a little bit of blue to give it a little bit of a vibrant pop. And then, you know, a pencil would be really good for this too. A waterproof pencil. Um, my my gel eyeliners are all the one color that would stand out a little bit is my steel gray, but they're all pretty dark. Like I said, they're more kind of human color than say sort of fun, you know, accessory color. So there's a little bit of blue there. So um, it, it gives a little bit of a. It's hard to see, but it gives a little bit of a fun pop. So go ahead and put your glasses back on. I don't know if you, you can probably can't even see it, huh? Yeah, I probably have to close my eye, and I uh, can't see with my eyes closed. <laughs> all right. So, um, so all during, so now through midnight, um, the coupon code is MugLive13 because this is uh, season one, episode three. So, anything that we use today, or anything else you might want to get, uh, this is a twenty percent cart discount code. Okay, so. The only thing this will not work for are products that are already discounted. So on my uh, product, I have uh, uh, on my website, I have what's called value bundles, where I put colors that or products that just obviously go together. Say like uh, my gel proof, um, waterproof eyeliner, and the brush that I just used, and and there and it's less, and it's actually less than twenty percent off. So so look at the value bundles as well. Um, but that's the that's the secret code. Um, Does that also apply to your makeup um, shadow, your shadows, eyeshadows? There's like a five. There's five of them. That's a good question. I I don't know. I'd have to look at that. So what's your some of the colors you used on my eye are in that bundle, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Blue looks really pretty. So I'm glad that she asked for the blue because now I'm looking at it going. <laughs> you see, what, you see what happens when people share with you like good ideas. She's she's talking to me, and I have this little pretty blue, and now I'm interested in her because I wasn't interested in her before. No, <laughs> what I mean is th the makeup that she's wearing creates more intrigue because it's in a place that sort of draws me in, as opposed to just you know eye makeup for like look at my eye makeup. There's this kind of subtlety to it that makes me curious um yeah i like i like the way makeup can make us feel um so all the all of the um tips that i've been sharing with you today they're all of course available in my uh best-selling book face for the heart um mastering authentic beauty makeup now the techniques that i use they really do make a difference um makeup is makeup but how we apply it how we our relationship with how we wear our makeup is what um, makes a difference because I don't care if I'm using, I don't care whose makeup I'm using, I can always make it look better when I follow these techniques. And I often say, I think I wrote, I, I wrote this book for me. <laughs> um, you know, I, I started teaching at a school and all the students wanted a, uh, 
It's like, oh, is this all you're going to give us handouts for this? And I'm like, no, you lazy student. Take notes. What do you expect? But then I said, no, I'm going to write. Um, I'm going to write, you know, a book, and I'm going to help people enjoy it. But it, it's very helpful because I use makeup now where I should use it instead of putting it here where I don't need it. Uh, what, what do you mean so by that? You mean in like, other words, before, for example, maybe when I use foundation, uh -huh. I would put it all the way around, and then you would have a line. Right. Like, Think about how do I get rid of that line? Don't yeah. do that anymore. Well, that's good. I'm in the heart. Right. Right. <laughs> right. The heart. The heart of the face. The and and once you discover it, you just kind of go, duh. I mean, that's what I did. I I mean, I was like, why is my makeup look so bad? And then I went, oh, I figured out. Um, yeah, she's using the the brushing technique with the foundation where there's more here and it just dissipates to nothing, and that really is. It's sort of a, it's an eye opener how little makeup you can use and then how great you can look. Right. Um, in fact, better and how much better you look to other people. Um, so, I, in terms of our live chat today, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a, a quick peek. Um, so what happened was I turned off all my other Wi-Fi's so that uh, I wouldn't get a bad stream. Um, so I'm going to check here real quick. Let me see if I, if it, if I can get... Um, yeah, it's just kind of... My other computer just kind of froze up here. Um, I'm going to try one thing. Yeah, it's searching for Wi-Fi, but I can't find it. One second. I'm going to try something and see if I can't get updated because there might have been... Chat disconnected. Oh, that's too bad. It is, but you see in front of you, um, we're at, I'll do another show next week, and I, of course, so far, except for my first show, it's, it's been great, because uh, I've had people, um, you know, recommend, say, hey, what about this, how, you know, all the suggested topics, I'd rather have you come on the show, and, or at least suggest the topic, and or come on the show, and be my model as well, so we can really uh, investigate um, we can investigate the topics together. All right, so one second. Well, now it went back to good. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> All right, so, so, so that's that. Let's see how that's doing. Yeah, we've been good all the time. All right. Fantastic. So I don't know how long we've been going, but oh my God, almost an hour. I really, I really apologize. That was too long. Um, but hopefully you got some good tips out of this. Um, when I recover my chat, I'll look into it, and because uh, I want to uh, pick someone for the uh, for the winner of today's um, featured product, and uh, I'll get in touch with you, and you will also let me know what color you want because I have many, many colors. And uh, so thanks so much, and thank you, Terry Price, Welcome, because she's so awesome <laughs> uh, for coming in and, and being, you know, really sort of a – she came in here with like, okay, I have this top, this top. I have these glasses, that glasses. <laughs> All right, tell me what to do. I need to rehearse. <laughs> and so because of that, she was awesome. Um, so thanks so much for watching, and we can't wait to see you next time. All right?